สวัสดีครับ I'll start with uh, good morning because we're starting uh, before 12 noon uh, for today. It's Tuesday, the 12th of January, 2021, and this is the English language summary of the daily press briefing here at the Center for COVID Situation Administration, or CCSA, as as always. So today, for the spokesperson's briefing, it was, it was done in remote uh, from Ubon Ratchathani uh, province. Uh, because Dr. Tuisin today had been uh, assigned as Inspector General, Inspector General of the Ministry of Public Health to visit Ubon Ratchathani province, uh, wherein there is a field hospital there, and to uh, visit to uh, meet with the officials and monitor the situation there. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a moment. So first, starting with the general situation and number uh, uh, of the situation of the cases in in Thailand, I'd like to start off with. A new kind of reverse kind of presentation. The key uh, number uh, for today is 4035, 4035. These are actually the cases that are still active, still under treatment in Thailand today. So if someone asks you about how many active cases there are currently at the moment in Thailand today, it would be 4035. The numbers you see on screen are cumulative uh, numbers. Uh, these, some of the numbers are higher than 4,000. So just to start off with uh, a, uh, the, the former presentation that would be straight to the point that we have only 4,000 uh, left in terms of active cases. Nevertheless, we monitor each day's situation. So we have to show you all the numbers. For today, we have new confirmed cases at, as 287. The cumulative total uh, since one year ago until today is 10, over 10,000, as you can see on screen. The number of recoveries that we recorded for today is 166. The total recoveries since the very beginning of last year, 6, 000, over 6,700. But I guess I won't be focusing on those numbers because they might be misinterpreted if you see the number of 10,000 or 6,000. The key number, the key word is are the active cases uh, that are still under treatment. Those still under treatment in Thailand, 4,035, and no additional fatalities. Just some observations from the presentation, the briefing by the spokesperson, Dr. Thuy Sin. Today, uh, the, globally, the number has reached over 90 million infected persons with some of the countries on the top of the list that remain uh, in uh, we are very much concerned uh, globally. They have a lot of tens of thousands of uh, infected, also with deaths as well. For Thailand, now we stand at number 128 uh, globally, uh, out of almost 200 countries around the world, 128. The spokesperson also mentioned about 10 focus provinces. Uh, mostly they are those provinces in the central region near Bangkok. These 10 uh, provinces of focus have over 50 infections uh, cases uh, in, in, in themselves in, in each province. Uh, these, these 10 provinces are Bangkok, Chonburi, Rayong, Samut Prakan, Tantaburi, Nontaburi, Nakhon Patom, Ang Thong, Patum Thani. But basically the provinces near uh, Bangkok and in the uh, central and towards the eastern region of Thailand. So these 10 focus provinces, we have been giving them very strong uh, caution for the residents there to abide by all the measures very strictly. These are the 10 provinces which are in the highly controlled uh, areas, highly controlled provinces, and of course there will be more measures uh, for them, including for, uh, travel to and from these provinces. So that's the focus. The number of provinces around the country that have not yet been affected by COVID. Uh, yesterday, it was still at 19. Today, we have a new province that had that found one new case of COVID, which is the province of of Roy It. So therefore, uh, Roy It is the 59th uh, province uh, that has been affected by COVID. There remains only uh, now 18 provinces without any cases uh, in the province at all. And as I mentioned, uh, when there is uh, just one number, one case in each in that province, we uh, take the province into the list of the province being affected, if there's, even if there's only one, one case. Um, one point, of course, also is that the field hospitals that we are constructing, uh, reconstructing, 
uh, around the country in various provinces are very beneficial for us uh, to be able to address and cope with the uh, high uh, number of infections uh, daily. The field hospitals around the country uh, in the provinces are of the same uh, standard uh, that we have been, that have been set by the Ministry of Public Health. So wherever the field hospital is being uh, built around the country, uh, they will be of the st same standard in order to ensure that our medical standards are met. Dr. Tuisin also talked about the, uh, his visit to Ubon Ratchathani province, I'll, and I'll recap that a bit. Uh, he, he, he himself and his team uh, visited the field hospital in Ubon Ratchathani, which utilized the area and the building of Ratchapat uh, University in Ubon Ratchathani. Uh, he also met with the uh, disease control committee of the province of Ubon Ratchathani in a meeting that was chaired by the provincial governor of Ubon Ratchathani, as well as other uh, relevant officials. In Ubon Ratchathani, there had recently been three cases uh, found since uh, December, three cases of COVID found since December. These three cases have actually caused the authorities to have to go out and check around 100 persons who were in contact uh, with these three persons, 100 persons who are of higher risk, and they are being contacted and being tested for COVID. So three cases since, since, since December in Ubon Ratchathani in particular. Out of these three cases, two cases have been found to be linked to the Samut Sakhon uh, cluster. So the effort in that province continues. The cooperation with the private sector in terms of cooperation in reconstructing, in providing equipment uh, for the field hospital, that continues and that is, uh, has been reiterated uh, in the province of Ubon Ratchathani where there had been proposals from the private sector to take part to take part in the construction and in the provision of various equipment needed in that province. So the field hospital in Ubon Ratchathani that uh, Dr. Tuisin visited was reconstructed from a uh, gymnasium and the facilities, the needed facilities were added to that uh, site. So that's just one example of a site visit that the Inspector General uh, had been uh, making. There'll be uh, more in the future and then we can provide you with uh, information, detailed information regarding uh, different provinces in, in due course for audiences, both Thai and foreign, who live in those particular provinces. So I'll move on to some uh, pieces of information important to the English language or foreign community in Thailand first uh, is Ma Shana. So just to mention first about the internet data that is used, uh, internet, internet, data, internet data used for Marchana application is now free of charge. The Ministry of Digital Economy and Society announced that the usage of internet data on while you're using Marchana application is free of charge. The ministry has sought cooperation from the main mobile operators in Thailand to waive data usage uh, charge from users while using the application in order to allow everyone to track uh, their locations and uh, help authorities to ident identify those who have been in close contact with infected people. This is in part in the effort by the government to ease the people's uh, burden during the outbreak. Uh, if possible, I'd like to show you a screen. I have personally actually uh, downloaded uh, Mochina for, for some time already and I've been using it, testing it in order to come and inform the audience on, on how, how it is. So, so this is the, of course, on, on your cell phone, when you download uh, Mochina uh, and you sort of like answer the um, uh, questions on, on Mochina, uh, in, of course it's available, available in English, and when you answer those questions it will rate you on the risk factors uh, and uh, soon, when you take a picture, it comes up on your screen as well, it'll indicate whether you are at uh, high risk or low, low risk, right? So if it's low risk, it would be green like this with this QR code. So, so fortunately, this is my telephone screen. I'm very low, very low risk, last updated at uh, 12 noon before this uh, news briefing. And if I just update it, uh, it'll update the time. It's now 12, uh, after 12 noon, the time will be updated. And, and I'm, still, I'm still at very low risk. 
which is very good. So of course they use uh, GPS technology uh, to see where I have been traveling. This smartphone had been moving about, if it had been visiting uh, high risk places or not, and it would warn uh, me or the user on this, if you're uh, low or high risk. At the same time, uh, if other users of Mochin app have been using this and they visited uh, high risk places, they would be warned, they, they would probably have a red uh, circle, a red uh, uh, sign, a red, red color com coming up to, to, to warn them that they, are, they went to high risk areas. And if by chance I am in the same building or walk past that colleague, that friend who is at high risk, Bluetooth technology will warn me that I'm coming near a person that is of higher risk. So, so this is the practical use of it that I wanted to show uh, to the audiences uh, today. So fortunately, very low risk for myself and hope for all of you as well. The Digital Economy uh, and Society Ministry also reaffirmed that the application can now accommodate up to 30 million users. Dr. Tuisin had mentioned before that around five, uh, almost five million uh, downloads already. It can accommodate up to 30 million users. Don't hesitate to take uh, part in this collective action, Motion App. Furthermore, uh, internet, internet operators are also working to upgrade the fixed broadband internet speed for subscribers of the internet uh, usage without increasing the prices to support people working or studying from home. The internet users will have their speed upgraded in no less than 100 megabits per second, also free of charge. So this is very good cooperation from the private sector for the whole of society, for those who have to, of course, work at home or study at home. Another piece of information is uh, that the Food and Drug Administration has warned that the public not to buy or use uh, rapid test kits at home. This was mentioned also already by the spokesperson the other day. It was found that many people were buying rapid test kits and performing the tests themselves. These are not only detect a change, these, these tests only detect a change in a person's immunity level, not the virus itself. So in some cases, the takers of the tests found results to be negative, but in fact, they could have contracted the virus, as many of the infected persons are asymptomatic. With false diagnostic from the rapid test, infected persons could accelerate the speed of the virus as they may have false confidence and may not fully follow the disease control measures. So for example, if the test reading of the test is not accurate and it, is, it shows that you are negative, for example, but in reality you are positive, then you would act as if you, have, you, you were negative and, and COVID free. So that would be a, a risk. I'd, I'd like to compare this maybe perhaps to those uh, uh, kits that, that, that women can buy for, for pregnancy uh, tests, of course. The result being positive or negative, that would mean that um, you would, uh, the, the woman would be having a, a baby soon or, or not and things like that. But that can be confirmed with, with a doctor. But for, for this rapid test kits, if the results were slightly inaccurate, it can cause misunderstanding of, from, from, of the user, and they may think that they don't have, or not infected by COVID, you know, or, or on the reverse, they might think that they have uh, COVID. So, so it's best, of course, to have the tests uh, when required in, in the medical facilities and in, in the hospital. If there is a misunderstanding that uh, a person does not have COVID when, while he or she has uh, COVID, the risk is on the bigger part of society. The person might be walking around uh, and feeling uh, normal as if, as if there was uh, no, no risk at all and infect others in society. So, so that's a difference with other sorts of rapid tests that I, that, I, that I mentioned. It affects other people and the risk remains high. So for those who have traveled to high risk areas or have close contact with infected persons or show symptoms, seek medical advice, hospitals and public health centers and receiving a swab test at medical, with medical for professionals uh, without charge if they are considered to be at risk. The last piece of information is on travel permit documents. Now some updates on the measures pertaining to interprovincial uh, travel. The Tourism Authority of Thailand, TAT News, that I mentioned uh, quite often, there's a web there 
on the provincial measures. It has been updated every day. Uh, the one I saw update was yesterday. The interprovincial travel information is also available on other uh, sites. The authorities put on measures for travels in and out of maximum controlled areas provinces with stringent measures, mostly in the eastern section of uh, from, from Bangkok, Sut Sakhon, Chonburi, Rayong, Chantaburi, and Thrad. Those who wish to travel are required to obtain uh, travel permits uh, for these particular five provinces. Uh, these information are available. This, this uh, travel per permit, permit form actually are now available to download at moicovid.com, the website of the CCSA, uh, Ministry of Interior, and present the documents with our authorization to officers at the checkpoints. And you have an, an infographic there, courtesy of the Public Relations Department, on where people can obtain travel permit document uh, templates uh, for the five provinces uh, mentioned. Members of the public can download and fill uh, the form and have the document approved by competent authorities, uh, such as the district uh, officials, heads of local administrative organizations in these provinces, and heads of uh, police stations as well. For businesses and organizations which require employees to travel frequently, the employers um, can also issue the travel permit uh, in, in writing as a, as a document. So just in additional points, just in closing, as many of us are now staying more at home for, for work, I've talked to some of my uh, friends in other uh, offices in the private sector as well. Uh, many of them have been working from home quite uh, more frequently. Just to comply with the government's advice to avoid traveling, that's very important. The World Health Organization, or WHO, suggests some tips that you can make that you can make your stay at home healthy. One of the many ways to help yourself stay strong, of course, is to eat healthy. Staying at home means we have more opportunity to cook. So the WHO has recommended for us to uh, eat healthy, eat fresh, have enough fiber, and enough, and avoid excess of sodium and sugar. I'm sure that's one advice I would have to take personally my, myself. Stay healthy at home. That's an infographic from the World Health Organization that you see on screen. You can find more advice on eating healthy, staying physically active, and taking care, very importantly, of your mental health on the World Health, at the World Health Organization website, which is uh, who.int. And as we see that the number of new confirmed cases, around 200 plus, had, is still in around, around 200 plus, but in the higher 200 plus for today. Uh, we'd like to encourage the public to strictly continue to strictly adhere to the health guidance, to the uh, application, Moshina application, which I had shown you the screen just now. The practice also DMHTT, and once again, distancing, mask wearing, hand washing, testing, meaning temperature check, and Taichana Moshina applications, uh, the platforms. The, this practice can, also, can help produce, uh, reduce the risk obviously, and prevent the spread of COVID and help us overcome this challenging time together. So thank you very much for your kind attention today. And we hope that uh, Dr. Tui Sin, our spokesperson, will be back uh, soon. We won't allow him to go anywhere far for too long. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Sorry,